Canola School on realagriculture.com is supported by Bear Crop Science. Uh, because of the wet feet syndrome uh, and of course some emergence issues earlier on in some regions because of abundant moisture or cool soils, uh, staging when it comes to swathing and harvesting is going to be a challenge again this year. And of course it's going to vary across the west. Some areas are going to have more difficulty preparing and understanding the staging of canola in time for harvest and uh, each year we always deal with this situation. Uh, I think this year again is going to be a, a, a mind bender if I can put it that way because uh, no matter how many times you've been out there looking at the staging of a crop this year again very likely will be different and when we say staging it still comes back to seed color change not the 60 kilometer hour check from the grid road and saying, oh, it looks like she's ready. Uh, getting in the crop and actually doing uh, a, 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 an assessment of seed color change from the bottom of the plant up is the key, key way to actually do an assessment and find out on an average perspective where that particular field is and whether or not it's time to uh, start putting it down or not. Well, how we do that assessment is uh, we, we get asked this every year, of course, and uh, we have a, a Canola Council swathing guide that's, that's available. You can get it on our website, uh, on the Canola Council website. You can print it off. Uh, if you know one of our agronomy specialists out there, by all means, hopefully if they have any left, they can give you a card. Uh, we have them actually in our packages today here at the Combine Clinic. And uh, what they do is basically give you an understanding of how what the seed color change should look like at the optimum time for swathing. And there again, we usually will start at the bottom of the plant on the main raceme is the key and look at where the seed is color changed in that pod towards the bottom of the plant, then about a third of the way up, another third, and then uh, right at the top just to see where that range is. And if we get into that 50 to 60 percent seed color change, you know you're at the optimum time and you should be moving with your swather quite quickly. If you're on the high side of that, you know you might even, to avoid some shelling, you might be out there swathing at night instead of in the heat of the day. Uh, so, you know, again, it's a judgment call. Uh, it's a scouting issue. In other words, getting out there with your truck and walking off the approach into the field or with your quad or what have you to make sure that you have an opportunity to get an insight. Because with a lot of the different cultivars these days too, we've been noticing that uh, uh, some have more seed color change earlier than you might think. In other words, that assessment from the grid road might be leading you a little bit off base. In other words, it might look green, but once you get in there, you can see that the seed started to change quite dramatically. So you might have to be moving quicker with the swather in a day or two than you realize, or you think the crop has already turned. In other words, uh, the sun scald effect, like a sunburn that can take effect on a crop, might be leading you astray from the grid roads, giving you an idea that that crop's ready and you go in there and start swathing. And then after you have looked at a few seeds in the pods, holy smokes, this, this crop isn't quite as ready as I thought it was. In other words, it has far too many translucent seeds that have that watery look and, uh, and they're going to dry up and shrivel up and blow out the back of the combine and you're going to lose a lot of great potential yield because of that. So assessing seed color change is the ultimate when it comes to, uh, to understanding when or to be putting a crop down in the swath or not. So when should, well, like, where should we be checking these? Like, where should we, where should we be making that assessment? What plant should we be looking at? Well, you, you, you know, you use your judgment, okay? The, you go out and you, you basically, if you're around a quarter section of land, like I said, get off the quad or get out of the truck and walk in at least two rounds of the air seeder, okay? That's my rule of thumb, is walk in at least two rounds of the air seeder. So whether it's a 20 foot or an 80 foot, you know what that means. In other words, you're getting into what normal would be as far as this, uh, the crop is concerned. And look around you and see if you can find plants that you feel represent that area. And pull the plant out of the ground and then start on the main stem, start looking at 
where the seeds are as far as seed color change from the bottom up of the plant. And then see, look how many branches you have. Because the branches will be less mature, okay, than on the main raceme. That comes back to plant per square foot. If you have large bushy plants that look like a Russian thistle, for instance, or a willow tree, you know that you're going to have many branches, a thick stalk, and the seed on the outlying branches may have more of an effect on the total yield than one would prefer. So then that main raceme judgment may have to be buffered somewhat to what the branch seed color changes are, or the pods on the, on, the, on the branches and their seed color change in relation to your judgment of when you're going to swap. So that's why there's no absolute perfect method here. Everyone has to make a judgment at the time and that's why out, getting out there and scouting is really important. And it can be, you know, seeded the same day, but on one side of the creek, she comes in a little faster than the other side. And variety may not have much to do with it. You know, it, 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 it's, a, it's a judgment call for every grower every year. And that's why uh, we have all these wonderful challenges with agriculture in Canada. <laughs>